what's up everybody, my name is Trophy and the Babbling Belgian and welcome back to, well, a special episode of Gwent Edge. The Novigrad expansion to Gwent has arrived. The extremely new faction, the brand new faction to Gwent has arrived as well. And uh, today we're going to be doing a little bit of an introductory class into the new keywords, the new leaders and a few of the new cards we're going to be opening up a few kegs as well and if i have the time maybe we're going to do one match with the new faction so novigrad is not the new faction it's the name of the expansion but the new faction's name is called the syndicate and it's a collection of five crime lords and their gangs that have combined into one very dangerous organization the syndicate first things first we're going to check out the new uh well, reward book that has been added with this expansion. So the Syndicate faction tree has been unlocked. And over here we have a new, well, skill tree with the five leaders that you can unlock. So there's no base leaders that are unlocked for the Novigrad faction, the Syndicate faction. Um, and as you can see, there's immediately five new leaders. So we'll start from top to bottom, from the top left to the bottom left in a clockwise matter. So the first guy, uh, if you've played, well, most of these characters are actually familiar uh, if you've played The Witcher 3 most days. So Cyrus Hamelfart. So uh, Cyrus Hamelfart is the leader of, uh, well, the hierarch of the Eternal Fire. Sort of a religious cult and he's the first of our gang leaders. Um, he's called Hamelfart, which is not, yeah, so it's not the fact that he's flatulent. He's called Hamelfart because in German that's basically uh, going to heaven, the journey to heaven. But yeah, in English it sounds a bit more weird. So, order, spawn a fire-sworn zealot and summon him to an allied rope. And you can do this three times. Um, and the fire-sworn zealot is a doomed unit that is human and fire-sworn. So that's the name of his faction. Uh, the Firesworn Zealots are actually included in a lot of the cards. So a lot of the cards actually generate more and more Firesworn. So Firesworn Zealots, I should say. And these actually support a kind of a swarm-like deck similar to Arakas. Queen, but then with a bit more power. So two power instead of one. And we can only... Well, we can make three, but we don't automatically make more. But when all charges are depleted, gain two coins. Coins, or Novigradian crowns, are the new resource system. Well, we should say that, uh, well, CD Projekt Red has added a resource system because we didn't really have one before this. So coins, or crowns, it's the same thing, um, as the new, is the resource system spe specific for the Novigrad, the Syndicate faction. So a lot of those new abilities will revolve around coins, either spending them or, ha or having them in the bank. And the cool thing about coins is that they're actually stored. So you can keep them on the board and I don't think there's actually a way outside of Syndicate to get rid of coins when you're facing the Syndicate faction. So um, that is there and it also transfers, for now at least, it transfers over from one turn to the next. So if you have five coins at the end of a round, you actually keep those coins until the next round as well, and so on and so forth. So that's Cyrus Hamelfart and the Fire Sworn faction. Then our next one is, well, really familiar, Horson Jr., the uh, sadistic leader of the Cutthroats. So Horson Jr., on order, damage an enemy unit by seven, and then gain coins equal to, the, to any excess damage dealt. So if you deal 7 damage on a unit that only has 4 power, you also gain 3 coins, for example. So the excess you gain in coins. Basically that, just 7 points, but it's... You need to look at coins as almost the same as points. Because you can use those coins, it's basically balanced like that. So the coins you get, uh, you can usually transform into damage or boosts by the same amount. And then we have another familiar face, Cleaver. Cleaver is the leader of the uh, the brawlers, I think they're called. So on order, play a special card from your deck with 9 provision cost or less. Increase this value by 1 for every 2 crime cards in your starting deck. So this means that it's similar to Ardol, aside from of course the 
fact that the ability is different, but the way it's boosted is similar to Ardal. So the proficient cost can go higher depending on the amount of crime cards. Crime cards are also new. They're a sort of special card, so more on that later on. And so with Cleaver you can play any of those crime cards if their provision cost is 9 or less, or higher depending on how many crime cards you have. So for example, if you have 4 crime cards in your deck, you can pull uh, a card of 11 provision cost from the deck with Cleaver. Then we have our last familiar face, so the King of Beggars, or Francis Bedlam as they call him. So he's the leader of the... I kind of forgot the name of the faction he's from, but well, he's basically the leader of the Beggars. But uh, So on order, gain two coins, you can do that three times, and every allied tribute costs one coin less. So tribute is our first new uh, keyword, if you want to call it that. And tribute, as you can see right there, on the ploy, you may choose to spend a specified amount of coins to trigger this ability. So it's an optional deploy ability. More on that once we gather one of those cards and we can use that ability then as an example. And then our last leader is actually a new creation. It's a bit weird because uh, I can actually show you that because it's a sea jackal. But uh, Gudrun over here, it's the image of her. She's going to be the base leader, but uh, right now she hasn't been enabled yet. So she will be added to our inventory uh, rather soon if it's not already done by the time this video comes out. So Gudrun is the leader of the uh, Skellige based faction in Novigrad. And she controls the ports. So you can see in the background a bit that you can see the map of uh, Novigrad. And it actually fits with their location. So Gudrun is the... Well, has control over the ports. Cyrus Hamelfart, the upper part of Novigrad with the, the Temple of the Eternal Fire. Then Horson Jr. to the east. Cleaver to the east as well, but the southeast. And then Francis Bedlam has the bits under his control. So uh, that's that. I can't actually see what Gudrun's ability is, although I might be able to. There we go. Check that she's actually in the inventory already, which is great. Uh, Gudrun Bjorn's daughter is the leader of... Well, yeah, that faction. I, we're gonna go over the names soon. So on order, gain 9 coins and then boost an allied unit by any excess amount gained. So you can only keep 9 coins in the bank, uh, but you can use the excess amounts to boost an allied unit. So again, taking back those excess. Uh, like Horson, you gain... Uh, with Horson you gain coins equal to the excess of damage. With her you gain boost equal to the excess of coins. Her ability is higher because boosts are usually, well, assumed to be weaker than damage. Because damage equals removal and that way we uh, can do more on the board than just boosting. So, as uh, I've also supported Gwent again, I've bought the premium pre-order pack and that's exactly what we're going to open. As you can see, I already have 41 uh, Novigrad CAGs as well. And that's because of the generous people at CD Projekt Red that gave all the Gwent partners uh, 40 extra CAGs. You should also have one in your inventory if you check out your inventory after the... Uh, update has been downloaded. So what we're gonna do is open up the premium pre-order pack right now. Flammo. And we get the Spectral Fire premium animated card back which is really really fun. Look at that. It's uh, It has blue animated fire. If you went for the cheaper option, the 50 normal kegs instead of the uh, 20 premium kegs that I have now, uh, you would get the less dark version of this with normal red fire. But uh, there we have it. Then we can open up these premium kegs and as you can see there's some uh, issues with the white images the developers have promised me that this will be fixed in next week's hotfix so uh, I'm looking forward to that. Um, so Novigrad premium kegs, let's open that up. So premium kegs means that all the cards will be animated. There we go. I do need to note as well that the developers have told me that the, um, the some cards have not yet been animated. Um, and will be added later on and those cards will have a banner that just shows that it is a premium card but that the animation will come later on. And there we have our first card. It is not animating for some reason. I want to check that out but the animation isn't going and they don't have the banner but must be because it's kind of glowing so I think it has but Renegade Mage, Human Mage and the Blind Eye, so I think that's a faction of Bedlam, of Francis Bedlam, of the King of Beggars. Deploy, damage an enemy unit by one, 
tribute one damage it by three instead so that means tribute if you have one coin you can choose to change damage to three instead of one but again it is optional so we don't need to do that lovely card art by the way seems like a, a kind of a fire mage or a renegade mage trying to get away from his pursuers uh, when fleeing Novigrad, probably in the storyline of the Witcher 3. Next card, the Casino Bouncer. So the cut-ups from Horson Jr. Insanity, so that's new. Insanity, if you have insufficient coins, a unit with insanity may damage itself by its fee amount to trigger its ability. And its ability is fee 2. Summon all copies of this unit from your deck to this row. Meaning... Fee uh, allows you to trigger this ability by spending the specified number of coins. It's kind of an order ability, but with zeal included. And you need to spend the amount of coins that's next to it to actually do it. So Fee is basically uh, a zeal ability, a zeal order ability, with just the number of coins you need to spend. And spending, of course, is, uh, well, getting rid of coins. So you reduce the amount of coins you have left. So if you, this is actually an interesting card, because that means that if you have two of them in your deck, you can, without any extra coins, you can get uh, six points on the board and have some tinning and six points for six provision, which is really, really nice. Then, Swindle is a crime for the Crown Splitters. That's what uh, Cleaver's uh, faction is called. So it's a crime card, Swindle, profit a random amount between four and six. And profit just means that you gain the amount in coins. So you gain a random amount between four and six, which is actually cool. Because you get four coins as a basis, which is uh, fine, and possibly up to six. And now we have the Arena and Draga. It also has insanity, and it can damage an enemy unit by one. And it has one cooldown as well, so you can use that every turn if you want to. Possibly damaging the Andrega every time as well. Uh, we do need to note that Andrega, the insanity modifier needs to gain damage to actually work so if you can't take damage you can't use insanity you can't trigger insanity so uh because that's going to be important with a few of the other cards that has been added have been added in the uh, expansion so uh you might also notice i know a bit about these cards already it's because i've seen most of them in the uh public test realm uh, and that's all i can say about that it just was i included in that as well but we can talk about that there we go premium cards uh, let's check that. Tax Collector, that's our uh, Rizik, our developer as well. Tax Collector, ranged every ally turn on turn and gain a coin. So that is really, really cool. So you gain a coin automatically with a possible more if you just keep that going. Then a Witch Hunter Executioner, which is uh, Witch Hunter is part of the Fire Sworn. So Profit 2, uh, we got Profit already, so that's just gaining two coins. And Fee 1, give Bleeding to a unit for one turn. If it has Bounty, damage it by one instead. Bounty is interesting. So Bounty is a status effect that you can put on an enemy. And I think it's uh, unique for the Witch Hunters. And that means that whenever a unit with Bounty is destroyed, the player who plays the Bounty gains coins equal to that unit's base power. So if you kill a unit with four power, and it has a bounty on it, you actually gain that amount of coins. You gain four coins. Then the Eternal Fire Priest. Whenever you spawn one of one or more units, boost self by one. So that's a great engine card as well with the Fire Sworn Zealot that will be spawned throughout the match. I'm going to go for that one even, I think. Um, I'm going to try and make a deck in a second with the Fire Sworn. So let's just... It doesn't really matter, I think. Um, let's go for the higher one first. There we go. First keg opened up. On to the next one. First one, Courier. So that's the Grey Rider from uh, Thronebreaker, actually. The artwork for the Grey Rider. Human Agent Blind Eyes. Ah, you can see it over there in the uh, banner. So that's uh, art for... Partly for Nilfgaard as well. So you can see it in the top banner. It's partly black, which means that it can also work for Nilfgaard. Deploy on the melee row. Look at the top three cards from your opponent's deck and move one to the top. Or look at top three cards from your deck and move one to the top. So this is actually pretty good. Because it's four for four. But with an extra ability. That is cool. Then the Townsfolk. It's uh, whenever you gain coins, boost self by one. Interesting. Also a basic engine. A lot of engine cards actually. The back alley alchem. Well, just chemist. Give an allied unit poison and boost it by two. So yeah, a lot of the cards in Syndicate also kind of have this thing with uh, self-poisoning 
which is a risk, of course, but you gain some benefits because some cards actually gain benefits from getting poisoned. And then the Witch Hunter Executioner again, great, uh, which is the same. Goody. And then we can open this up. The Witch Hunter itself, deploy, place a bounty on an enemy unit. We've seen that. Then the Crown, the crown Splitter Tug. This one is interesting. The Vapors made a bit of a story there. So you can see a dwarf with an axe attacking a Cut-Up. So one of the clown characters, the Cut-Ups. Um, and we have another uh, new uh, modifier here as well. Intimidate. Boost self by one order specified amount whenever you play a crime card. Which is really great because that means that, because I think basically all crown splitters can have the intimidate ability. And on deploy you damage an enemy by two as well. So that's five for five and the extra possible point generation with intimidate. And then the halfling safe cracker for the crown splitters as well. Profit one. So you gain a coin and deploy boost self by one for each crime card in your hand. So basically another variant of the Doppler and similar cards that do the same thing for tactic cards and uh, just unit categories. I think I'm gonna go for the crown splitter this time. Yeah, the crown splitter is cool. So remember that artwork. So the renegade mage, we've seen that. Fire sworn scribe, it's a cleric, so I think that's also a new category. Ranged, whenever you spawn one or more units, gain a coin. So tribute again, if you have four coins, you can choose to spend those four coins and boost self by two, which is a worse deal in this uh, case. And I think it's just because you can defend this scribe better than to, uh, well, gain the coin benefit from uh, the spawns you do. Then the coerced blacksmith, that doesn't really sound good, right? Crown spit is again, profit one, so you gain a coin and fee one boost an allied unit by one. So spending one coin gives you another boost as well. So possibly, well... Most likely, because you get the coin as well, so you can spend the coin immediately if you want to. And then the line of credits from the blind eyes, destroy an allied unit or artifact and then gain six coins. It is a crime, but you can get rid of, uh, well, idle artifacts that way, which is actually interesting. So for example, with Portal, that would be very nice, because Portal is useless after you've played it. Then we have three more bronze cards, the Eternal Fire Disciple. Profit 2, so you gain 2 coins, so again 4 for 4. And a V2 ability to spawn a Fire Sworn Zealot. So there we have our first uh, Zealot spawner. And on a 1 cooldown, which is also cool. So low, as long as you have coins, you can keep spawning Fire Sworn Zealots with this unit. The Fistack Trafficker, so that's again a uh, drug dealer. So deploy, give poison to a unit, which fits with the fist deck. And if it's an ally, gain two coins. So again, the benefit from giving poison to one of your allies. And then the sewer radius, a human pirate, the tide cloaks. That's uh, Gudrun's uh, um, faction. So deploy, horde for, that's the ability I was looking for. So horde uh, triggers this ability if you possess the specified number of coins or more. So if you have four coins in your bank, you actually trigger this ability, but only then. So summon a copy of this unit from your deck to this row. Uh, I'm actually gonna go with the fire, this Eternal Fire Disciple. And on to the next one. The Shakedown. So gain three coins and boost an allied unit by three. So six basically for five. Crowns are not exactly the same as points, so keep that in mind, but it's close. And then the Courier again. Bloody good fun. So that's why I wanted you to remember that previous artwork, because this is actually kind of the start of that little story. So it's the same dwarf as the, the crown split that we saw before, and the same cut-up. So the cut-up first damaged the hand of this dwarf, and then he actually uh, retaliated with the axe to the face. We know that it, that's the order of things, because he has a bandaged hand in that older... Uh, in that other artwork. So three coins gained and spend all your coins and damage an enemy by the same amount. Could be much, could be a lot, uh, but it's at least three damage, which is also nice for uh, four provision cost. Then the Keeper of the Flame is also new. Boost adjacent allied units by one, and if you have four coins, you can choose to uh, do that to the, to the entire row, which could be possibly very strong if you have a lot of fire sworn salads on the row, for example. And then a purple one. A Vitter and a Lydia. So again, I think that's an also a new creation for uh, Gwent. So also from the tight clothes, of course. Look at that artwork. It's really nicely done. Um, profit one, so you gain a coin. And order damage unit by one. So it's order, not a fee. 
and Horde 6 damage it by 2 instead. So as long as you have 6 coins, you can do 2 damage each turn, but with a reach of 2. So incredibly powerful card, actually. Now we have Harold Gord. Boosts out by 0, but increase the boost for, by 1 for every special card you played this game. So fits with the crime spree that you can have with uh, Cleaver, but more an endgame card than uh, anything else. And then the Procession of Penance. The Human Firesworn deploy damage self by 6, reduce the damage by 1 for every Firesworn Zealot you control. So more Zealots you have on the field, the less this unit will damage itself. So it starts at 10, which is a lot for 6 provision, but of course the more Zealots you have, the less Zealots you have, the more it will go down. So it starts technically at 4, and for each Firesworn Zealot you have, it goes up to 10. So at 6 Zealots you have 10 power. I think I'm going to go for the Pirates. I think it's the coolest card in here, even though it's the only one with no animation just yet. Let's just get that in the bag. Cleaver's Muscle, just 5 for 5, but with a shield, and it's also a Squiretel unit, which is cool. And then the Eavesdrop, Crime, Profit 4, and draw a card and put that card from your hand at the bottom of your deck. So you basically, you don't discard it even, you put it at the bottom of your deck, but you draw another card. Which is really powerful in my opinion, because that's combined with 4 coins. Cool, and we get another uh, purple there. And the wretched addict, every ally turn on turn end of this unit is poisoned. There you go. So if he's high on Fistek, boost it by one. Which is a cool special engine type card. Oh, shiny. And then we have shinies indeed, the procession of penance again. Then Kurt, the human witch hunter, intimidates, so we know what that does. And deploy on melee lock a unit or deploy on the ranged row purify a unit instead so basically a powerful version of the aguara so it seems like a pretty powerful card then nathaniel pastodi also a cleric and partly for northern realms whenever nathaniel receives a boost give bleeding to a random enemy unit for t turns which is really powerful um you know what you got the procession two times now i'm gonna go for the procession first there we go the Bare Knuckle Brawler, so that's, I remembered that card, that's why I was confused. It's not Brawlers, it's Crown Splitters. Uh, just 4x4 four four and Intimidate, so goes up by 1 for every crime card you play. Then the Sly Seductress, another uh, very nice animation there, that's really cool. An Agent for the Blind Eyes, so for 3 coins you gain a shield. Whenever your opponent plays a unit, boost self by 1. And on Bonded, whenever your opponent plays a card, boost self by one again. Is that twice then? Ah, no, it changed from units to cards. So it's an engine that keeps boosting herself for every unit or card your opponent plays. So that's actually really cool. Then Cleaver's Muscle, we saw that, and Task Force as well. So we saw the two outer ones, and the middle one is the Kikimura Warrior. Again, a double for the monster cards but is mostly for the cut-up since they actually handle the arena. On order, destroy an allied unit and then spawn a Kikimori warrior and summon it to this row. So basically an extremely powerful card in an Arakas deck. Especially since you can keep generating these as long as you keep the one that is new alive. Which is really really cool. Starting to get more doubles, but there we have the Sea Jackal V2, who self by 2. And Horde 7 boosts self by 3 instead, but still... Although, the Horde will probably trigger on the boy. So if you have 7 coins, he actually boosts himself automatically by 3, if I'm reading this correctly. And that... Ooh. Ooh, that is horrifying. Damnation, damage 3 adjacent enemy units by 2. For every enemy unit destroyed on that blow, spawn a Firesworn Zealot on the opposite row. It's a cool one. Then we have the Wheel of Fortune uh, Crime. Damage an enemy unit by a random amount between 1 and 10. So basically Gascoin, but in a Crime card and with a lot less provision cost. And then the Pickpockets, you just gain 6 coins. Which is fine, but I think I'm gonna go for Damnation. That sounds horrible, but awesome at the same time. A Fence for the Tide Cloaks. Deploy on range, gain vitality for a duration equal to your coin count. That is cool. And Tribute 3, boost self by your coin count instead. But you need to spend 3 coins, so that's gonna be an interesting, well, um, dilemma you have to take there. Then the Temple Guard, partly for the Northern Realms. 
Deploy your melee boost three adjacent allied units by one. Okay, cool. Shakedown, we've seen that. And then we have the Sewer Radix, we've seen. Turn on the Fire Disciple as well. And then the Arena Ghoul on turn and destroy itself. Tribute to cancel the deploy ability. So you could get a very high powered unit here. But it's not uh, doubled. It's actually not doubled for monsters. So that's sad because you otherwise could use that as a uh, target, a consume target, and you get a free seven without even needing the tribute. Huh, interesting. I'm gonna go for the sewer radius. We're starting to get more and more doubles. So here you can see, as I said, his uh, hand is bandaged. So he was uh, stabbed first. And then the axe got second. Blind Eye Apothecary. Deploy on melee, heal an allied unit, or deploy on range, boost an allied unit by two. And for one coin, you can combine both deploy abilities instead. That is cool. I'm gonna go for that one. Really cool ability. Payday, you're not a crime. Damage an enemy unit by two with a death blow of getting five coins. So possible seven there. And then we have the Tight Cloak Hideaway, partially for Skellige, our first partial Skellige card. Deploy on ranged boost an allied unit by one for every pirate in your hand. That is actually interesting. Uh, I'm gonna go for that one first, because I've seen a lot of Witch Hunters. They're gonna keep the good times rolling. The Congregation. Spawn two Fire Sworn Zealots and summon them to an allied row if you have no coins. Spawn three Fire Sworn Zealots instead, so that's a really cool starter for a round. And then another Arena Ghoul, and we get a purple one in the middle. Oxenfurt natu Naturalist, Naturalist, Naturalist. Profit Zeus, so gain two coins. And use one of those coins to give an allied unit vitality for one turn. Looks like, yeah, a biology professor, basically. And then purple. Three new cards, Tunnel Drill. For one, well, you gain one coin, and for three, you can destroy an artifact. And that's a cool artifact destroyer for Syndicate immediately. Adalbertus Kalkstein, which gains two points, and he's probably an alchemist then. And for two coins, he can actually purify a unit as well. Really powerful cards. Nariko Meyersdorf, partial Nilfgaardian card. Whenever your opponent plays a unit while Rico is in your hand, Set his power equal to that unit's base power. So he switches around depending on what your opponent plays. And you can counter him immediately with that. That is cool, but I think you're gonna go for the Tunnel Drill. The Eternal Fire Inquisitor. Deploy damage an enemy unit by two. And on that blow spawn, a Fire Sworn Zealot and summon it to this row. Yep, yeah, that's going on to the Fire Sworn Zealot. Uh, yeep. And the rest we've seen. Yep, yeah, we have... And now we have all existing cards. So we even have every single one of these already. So let's just get another Kikimori Warrior then. So all the keywords have been explained. So I'm going to go through this a bit quicker. I'm also seeing a lot of doubles right now. So uh, no problem there. And um, we got the Aldelbertus Kong. time for free there. The double purple. And the rest we've seen. And then here we've seen the Wheel of Fortune. But we haven't seen Horst Borsodi. So one of the Borsodi brothers gain two coins. If Ewald Borsodi is in your graveyard, increase this card's initial profit by two. So you gain four coins instead. And for two coins, if he's on the range row, you can boost an allied unit by two. So that's a lot of abilities in one card. And then Morelse. So deploy and damage an enemy unit by four. And if you have six coins, you can spend those to destroy an enemy unit instead. Sounds like a really, really powerful card there. Because um, you get eight anyway. And you can even destroy it if you have six coins, which is great. So let's get him there. And then Fist Deck itself, a crime card, which gives you three coins. And actually makes you feel like a drug dealer then. And poison a unit. And then Slander, another crime card, you gain three coins. And you can place a bounty on an enemy unit. Possibly very powerful. Because I think bounties probably will be removed by Purify as well. Uh, and then we have three cards we've already seen. So I'm just going to go for the Witch Hunter this time. And another purple. Tr uh, two new cards. Excommunication is a crime for the fires. One banish an allied unit. Then play the top card from your deck. Okay. And then we have Graydon. Another Witch Hunter from the Witcher 3 this time. Deploy on the melee row. Destroy an enemy unit with a bounty. Tribute 5. Boost self by that unit's base power. Interesting. I'm going to go for him now, I think. Yeah, there we go. That's a really interesting card there. 
The doubles are seeping in a lot. I'm not my last kegs here, so let's just open that up. And yeah, the ones I don't have double yet. There we go. And then the next one, it's my final card keg. And another witch hunter. <laughs> yeah, it's just blues. I think I'm gonna be pretty much done with this. Uh, oh no, the Dark Cloak Ransackers. Damage an enemy unit by two on the ploy. Death blow gain two coins. And Horde 5 trigger the death blow even if the enemy unit has survived. So definitely going for that one. And that's it for now. Because it says open next keg, but I don't think I have any yet. It's gonna go onto those other ones. I still have one premium keg from one of the challenges. Let's just open that as well. It's not uh, specific, but at least I get a few uh, shiny new cards from it. I already have all of those, but you know what? An animated roach is never bad. Yeah, let's get an animated roach. Because I love the animation, just glitching all over the place. Inside a house, flying in the air. <laughs> I do love roach. And let's get out of here. So just to end this episode, I'm gonna play one match with a little deck I just put together really, really quickly with the cards I just uh, got from those kegs under the leadership of Cyrus Hemelfart himself. So let's just head into classic mode and see how that goes, because I'm pretty sure I'm gonna lose horribly, because um, yeah, I'm recording this match a few days after I've done the rest of the uh, introduction. So I'm thinking everybody else got some time to uh, Fill that out, because I had one of the most busiest weekends ever. Oh, and even the max music is great. Look at that. So it's a, uh, a variation on the Novigrad's uh, music. I have no idea what to play when. I am totally not used to this, but... So we can spawn Firesworn Zealots. I'm going to leave that for the next, the final round, preferably. And we're going to start with the tax collector since I don't have the spawn tree zealots if I don't have any coins. So over there on the left, you can see the amount of coins that each leader has. So profit two and bonded profit by four instead. So you can quickly get some coins in there. Uh, let's get the tax collector on the field. Because otherwise I don't really have anything, I think. Whenever you spawn one or more units, gain a coin. But with four tribute, he can boost himself as well. Or give bleeding to a unit for one turn if it has bounty damaged by one instead. I don't have ways of giving somebody a bounty just yet. So let's just go with the tax collector and start years. getting some coins. So this is uh, actually Rizik, one of the developers. Which is really cool. A really cool detail. So as I said before, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna win this. There we go. The fees are going around with the one damage every turn. I'm just gonna keep it like that, I think. I could go for the Fire Sworn Scribe to start getting some damage in. Um it has a bounty, but I can't play bounties just yet. So let's just go with the Fireworn Scribe, I think. Yeah, I'm really not used to this. So just ranged. And we get another coin in a second. And he has enough to damage me one more time. Damage an enemy by three. Gain three coins on death blow. That's interesting. Just get the witch hunter in. Uh, which gives us two coins. In me. I don't need to put him on the front row. So let's just do this. We get two coins. And by spending one we can give bleeding to a unit. And maybe even do that on the one in the back as well. There we go. End the turn. So Fee abilities actually can work multiple times in the same row. And it gains five co two coins for that as well. That is annoying, but not something... Yeah, it's not that big of a problem, I think. Um, let's see. You don't get any benefit from spawning more enemies, uh, more units just yet. 
So might as well start getting rid of these. Nobody expects them. So we can see how the zealots look like. So th those are the zealots. Um, and we can do... You know what? I'm going to keep it like that, I think. Because I need three for the artifact destruction if needs be. And there's Horson's Freak Show. So this card is a bit uh, bugged out. So you can keep spending coins to start giving um, bleeding to units. But if you use Insanity instead, so taking a hit, you actually damage it by one in instead. Um, and for now, that means you can do a lot with just uh, basically nothing. And he's actually a 6 for 6 card, which means they're definitely going to nerf him later on so let's um do i pass already i think i'm gonna pass i don't know what her ability is actually oh yes nine coins and boost nala then unit by the excess amount i'm just gonna pass there we go I'm no beggar. I'm an artist. and of course he's using his extra cards to gain more profit so four coins in his bag since the coins Go over into the next round. He still has uh, eight coins left, which is gonna hurt. Ooh, wow, the music is kicking in. Um, whenever you spawn one or more units, boost self by one. I'm gonna keep that for later on. <clears throat> do I have more profit cards? Just gonna do Eternal Fire Priests. Like this, and then the turn. Oh, they actually do lose coins. She only has four coins left. That is interesting. So what happens if I just use eavesdrop now? So I can... One of you gain coins, boost self by one. Yeah, I'm gonna get rid of the scribe. And end the turn. And then end pass the round. I don't know how many coins. So now I have five. How many do I have after this? It sounds like there, there's a few that are disappearing. Uh, portal is going to be nice, I think. So let's just get rid of this one again. And then Scorch is going to be fine. And still don't have a way to put Bounty on there. So let's get rid of Graydon, since I can't put a Bounty on anybody. Okay, that's fine. Uh, so yeah, you lose three coins apparently, or two. Well, I lost three and they lost two, so probably, yeah, okay, right, I know, I know about that. They, they have the coins uh, at the end of the rounds, but they round down, so I lose three, they lose two. Um, damage unit by one, horde six, damage it by two instead. That's gonna be fine in a second, but let's get the townsfolk on the field first. There we go. Okay. Fine. Let's use Portal. Oh, I only have one more left, but uh, that's annoying. That's annoying. Uh, that spawn. Fire Sworn Salads. Yeah, fine. Fine. Ooh. Is Horse Borsodi in his graveyard? It isn't. Hmm. So damage an enemy unit by two and increase his initial profit by two if he's in the graveyard. I'm gonna try to... Hmm. I could use Scorch now and they lose both of those cards. Do I do that? I think I'm gonna do that. Like this. So yeah, I've added Scorch to this deck, which is an interesting play as well. And then Tax Collector, as before, that's stupid. Yeah, I could have uh, dealt with that, but... Um, Hvitter and Elidia or not? I could use Morielse as well now. And get rid of the tax collector. There we go. 
And then we use our pirates. And we got one coin for that. We gain nine coins. So any excess is boosting that purify unit. I'll never be imprisoned again. Oh fuck. Yeah, Philippa Eilhart is a bit OP, I think. That's annoying. Yeah, I don't think I'm gonna be able to do anything about that. I'm gonna lose. Um, let's get the tunnel drill in. And then the turn. That was a lot, by the way. My and Ewald Borsodi, of course. Uh, Horse Borsodi, but Ewald is in the graveyard, so you can keep doing that. His initial profit was four then. Yeah. So they got four coins and now, yeah, the horde is live. I'm gonna I'm definitely gonna lose. So let's use the internal fire inquisitor to damage horse Borsodi by two. And then end the turn. So definitely not, good, not a good uh, deck to start with, but uh, at least you're getting a look at the coin mechanic like this. I, uh, as I said in the beginning, I wasn't expecting to win this anyway. And we're at half the points with one card uh, down as well, so... I only need four Port 7 boosts self by 3. Yeah, this is gonna keep going, isn't it? Um... I think... Yeah, the procession, both of these go against the amount of uh, fire sworn zealots that's on the field so let's just do this um blamo yes you have got a fire sworn zealot on the field and then spawn three more over there he venerates not the fire and like this she not worthy neither of mercy nor forgiveness and then and the turn Lots and there goes another one. And there goes another one. Yeah, the Horde 6 is a bit ridiculous. Um, then the procession of penance will damage itself by 3, so that's 7. But it's not a lot, is it? It's 7 for 6, so it's something, but it's definitely not as powerful as the other cards. And now we're going to take a look at how Tribute actually looks. That's that. He's probably going to spend the rest of his coins on the Sea Jackal. Tribute. Pay Tribute. Withhold Tribute. Pay Tribute. There we go. And we lost already, so... Uh, nothing to bicker about. Holy shit. Tribute 8, damage all enemies by 2 instead. That's a board clearing move, but uh, there we go. Our first match in Syndicate with a resounding loss, but uh, nothing to scoff at actually, because that was a really cool deck as well. And that's it. We're going to end this episode here. Hope you guys enjoyed this little introduction to the Syndicate faction and the Novigrad update in its whole. Um, and you know what? What are you guys still doing here? Let's go out and play it because uh, I'm really looking forward to get a few matches in, making some really cool decks. And by the end of the week, you can expect another interesting deck episode. Probably one, uh, well, with the Syndicate faction. We'll see about that at the end of the week. So thank you guys enormously for watching. And I'll see you guys in the next episode of Gwent Edge. Goodbye.